Welcome to Life Beyond Death. Today's near-death experience comes from Jill D. from the NDERF website. It was Halloween, 1971. I was on the back of a motorcycle heading out towards McDonald's for lunch with a young man. I was new to bike riding. The leaning thing was counterintuitive to me, like to lean the direction the bike was leaning. I learned the hard way not to lean the wrong direction. We came around a curve when the bike seemed to lean too much to the left. I found out later we had hit an oil slick. My instinct was to lean to the right. This was probably a good thing because otherwise I would have been pinned under the bike in oncoming traffic. I remember flying through the air and seeing the guardrail coming up awfully fast. After that, everything went black and I could hear a high-pitched, bell-like white noise. There was no light where I was, but I could see a very thin, very large crescent come into my field of view. It got smaller and smaller until I recognized what it was, the backside of the earth. I began to float in front of it until I was looking at the daylit side. It got smaller and smaller as some unseen force drew me away from it. It was much like what I suspect a tractor beam would feel like on Star Trek. I turned around to be drawn forward, not backward, and that's when I saw all the heavens. I saw the stars, the nebula, the novas, the dust clouds, the galaxies, the planets, and the sun. All of it was in 3D. It was alive and moving, not static like in the pictures from the Hubble. It was so much to take in, and all so incredibly beautiful. As I was drawn forward to what end I couldn't know, I realized a few things. This was real, as real as anything I'd ever experienced. I'm a lucid dreamer, so I know when I'm dreaming. This was no dream. The answer to the big question, why are we here, is why not? It's a good idea. Or better yet, because. That's really it. I noticed I began to be drawn faster and faster. The stars began to move past me at a faster rate until they became streaks of light. Then they started to blink out until I found myself in total darkness again. I wasn't scared because it was a comforting, maternal kind of place that made me feel safe. Then I noticed far, far away, a little speck of light like a single light from a farmhouse set way back from the freeway. Then it was closer, and I could tell it was golden. It kept coming closer, then closer, then went on for about eight to 10 jumps. I heard boom, 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 and the next thing I knew, I was right next to it. It was a golden cloud that was boiling. It looked like pictures I've seen of the surface of the sun. The next instant, I was inside the cloud. I was floating down a large hallway, maybe 20 by 20. There were people there, but I didn't recognize anyone, fading in and out of the cloud walls. I seemed to be floating over the heads of a lot of people on a level right below me. They were all in white and seemed to be content. I think these were Mormons. As I floated along, I remember one man in particular who was standing off to the left in a bend of the hallway. I asked him where I was, and he kind of chuckled and said, just keep going, go on down to the front. So I did. When I got to the end of the hallway, I met a guy that looked like a concierge in a hotel, working behind a desk. He looked up at me with a rather perturbed expression on his face, and he thought, what are you doing here? I said, I don't know, I'm just here. This is where the people back there told me to come, pointing over my shoulder to those hanging out. He shrugged, furrowed his brow, and thought, well, wait a minute, let me check something. While he was checking, I looked behind him and realized we weren't in a tunnel at all. We were in a cave, and he was at the entrance. Behind him was a beautiful landscape a hillside with sparkling trees and flowers and a brook, the most beautiful, peaceful place I had ever seen. Then I saw people sitting in lotus positions on the hillside facing to my left. 
a great light began pulsing on them. I was curious, so while this guy had his head down, I snuck around the corner to see what was going on. I walked into what appeared to be a very large presence that exuded love and innocence. It just seemed to be full of so much joy it couldn't contain it, and so it pulsed, and it felt really good. It flooded through me like water through a sieve. It was interesting, stunning, awe-inspiring, and all such words. I tried to get closer. I realized the presence was on an island, surrounded by a pool of liquid. When I stepped into the liquid, all that was Jill disappeared. I no longer existed, yet I was still there. I was the essence of life, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. I was conscious of my surroundings. I had joined with all the other consciousness in the pool and had become one with it. I knew all other life in the pool. I was one with everything. I was home. Then I was back. The guide pulled me back to the front of the desk. Breathlessly, I asked, what was that? He said, don't worry about that. Don't even think about it. I said, but, but I want to go back. Nope. But the next thing I knew, I was back outside the gold tunnel. As I was being repelled from the cloud, I could hear the clerk say, don't worry. I hoped he meant, don't worry, you can come back. I retraced all the footsteps I had gone through in space to get there in the first place. Big whoop, I thought, as I saw the heavens that had just moments before struck me dumb by their beauty. I was very downhearted after that. When I got back to the earth, all went black again. Then I was hovering up in the air where airplanes fly. I looked down and saw a curvy road below me with some kind of activity going on. I descended in stages, much like what happened when I encountered the gold cloud. My first thought was, hey, there's a wreck down there. When I got closer, it was, hey, that girl has on the same clothes I have. It wasn't until I was about 20 feet above when I thought, hey, that's me. Everything went black, and I heard someone screaming at the top of her lungs far away again. The next thing I opened my eyes, and I found I couldn't move because I was on my stomach and someone was sitting in the middle of my back. I asked them to get off, and a woman responded rather shakily, Oh, I'm a doctor's wife, and I live across the street from here. You've just had a motorcycle wreck, and I'm afraid you may have broken your neck. I'm sitting on you because I don't want you to move. Well, I knew I wouldn't have been sent back if I were paralyzed, so the only thing I could think to do was move my fingers. I moved them and asked, could I do this if I had a broken neck? She said, no, probably not, but still. I then said, I promise not to move, but you're making it kind of hard to breathe. Oh, she said. She got off and I felt better. Then I asked her, by the way, was someone screaming around here earlier? She paused and then responded, yes, that was you. Okay, I said, not me, but my body. I went to the hospital and they almost lost me a couple of times. I remember one ER doctor say, her blood pressures down to zero were losing her. I knew better. I came back. I clearly left my body and existed outside of it. I tried to tell people about it, but everyone thought I was crazy or on drugs, which I wasn't at the time, by the way. What do you think of this person's experience? Let me know in the comments section, and please click the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell to be notified when a new video is posted. Thank you for tuning in, and have a blessed day.